Live from the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at AWS reInvent 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Amazon and Trend Micro. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're live in Las Vegas for Amazon reInvent Conference The Cube. Second year in a row we're on the ground getting all the data, blanket coverage, we love his shotgun approach. Ton of action to talk about, the place is packed. I'm here with Stu Miniman, my co-host, I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. Our next is Joel Dabney, who is the CEO of CloudNexa. Um, got, got, you, got you on theCUBE again, welcome back. Thank you, John. So you guys Thanks are the premier too. partner of the year, which is a great honor with Amazon. Obviously they're, Amazon partners really are very, very selective. They're, they're very picky. I mean, people know, I mean, I know Amazon, know Andy. They, they're not a partner like partnering with everyone, they don't do a lot of Barney deals. They're very yeah. selective, they're very much a technique company. Um, give us the update, what's new this year? You were involved in the early beta of Config, one of their top announcements today. Full stack, in the cloud, integrated stacks, the consumption patterns, these are the themes. Now we're hearing high reliability databases. Give us the update on what you guys are doing and, and your role in the show. Yeah, well, you know, we, we were named another premier partner again for 2015, we're really excited about that. Uh, we never really know until it actually happens, and uh, it's a little bit of a nail biter, but we're really excited to be welcomed back into that select group of partners. Uh, as you mentioned, the AWS Config was announced today, and uh, we're happy that we participated in the private beta with Amazon and now have functionality available in our core product offering that we call VNOC. VNOC's a cloud management solution, and by the way, uh, we received notification from the US Patent Office uh, last week that we received a patent for our cloud management solution as well. So we're really excited about that. So a lot of the theme here, we, we interviewed the guys from GitHub yesterday, you're seeing the onboarding, cloud shares obviously auditing, you're seeing some coolness there. There's no perimeter in the cloud, a lot of chaos, a lot of opportunities. Share with the folks out there, what is the paradigm that you guys are executing on? Because the cloud yep. does bring up a new consumption pattern for the customer, your customers and cloud uh, uh, consumers. What has that done for the business side of it? As I'm a CIO or, or a mid-market business, I just want to turn on services, make sure I don't get hacked, making sure I get some code out there, have a mobile app, whatever those things are, it's changing. What's your premise of your business? Well, I, I, the best reference is Gartner's uh, Born in the Cloud. And it's truly a, a group of um, vendors that have embraced utility-based solutions that deliver their solution in a utility model and we help customers consume AWS services much easier um, in that, you know, look, if you're moving to the cloud for the first time, you might not be sure that it's the exact right solution for you. And when you have a utility-based solution, just like with Amazon, you turn it on, you turn it off, you try it, you're going to love it. But we just stand behind that and we align with you to make sure that this, this solution is going to work for you. And you're not going to spend a lot of money in the process to get there. So we call it cloud management as a service. Um, and I think it's just characteristic of most born in the cloud um, companies. It, we define ourselves more about what we don't do and put a bit really um, tight fence about the services that we provide to our customers to make sure that they're successful. So, you know, as such, we've developed our own little partner ecosystem with um, partners that also mimic our utility uh, model. Um, for example, this year uh, we released a premium tier offering uh, you might not have heard this, but uh, Sumo Logic, yeah. App Dynamics, and Trend converted their price models into utility pricing on top of our managed services offering. And this is wonderful for customers because, again, it gets them into the cloud and it gets them there and tracks their spending and usage on exactly what they need. So people are cobbling together the services. It's a Lego block kind of concept, really. I mean, we're back oh, yeah, to the good old Lego blocks. Best of breed. Do you guys have a lot of professional services? Is it all turnkey as a service, self-service? Uh, I am proud to say we have zero professional <laughs> services. Uh, we are... Uh, High margins. <laughs> you know, it's we, good leverage. Yeah. No professional services, everything is based on consumption and the, and the management of. So in your ecosystem, you must push out people to enable those services. Is that part of the, your added value, besides the utility-based kind of self-service? Well, you know, a lot of times customers will come to us and they have app modernization concerns. Uh, or they have application development issues, or they have, you know, compliance is a big thing. Andy talked about compliance and the, the uh, inroads that AWS has made, both on the public sector and on the commercial side, on compliance. Well, I mean, there's a specialized group of professionals that can do compliance audits. Um, 
we uh, recently announced a relationship with cloud technology partners out of Boston, and we, uh, we turned to Cloud TP for a lot of that work, and we, in turn, we're doing a lot of their managed service customers, uh, management, managed services for their customers. Awesome. Joel, can you unpack for us, you know, what is, you know, what, what does AWS Config mean to users out there, and how do you differentiate through your integrations compared to uh, the others that are so supported, uh, such as Splunk ServiceNow and Cloud Checker? Well, with AWS Config, it, it's a new service, and um, we've simply built a UI around um, AWS Config. It, it's a very powerful tool. It's going to give our customers much more visibility in, into historically what's been going on. Um, I think there's change management implications, um, and you can really get a good topographical view of what's going on with your environment. So um, it's a feature, actually, um, we bundle um, AWS Config along with three other um, services offerings into our free VNOC tier. So even if you don't want to be a Cloud Nexa managed services customer, you can come to us and you can get um, the AWS uh, Config UI capability um, at no cost. And I encourage if you're here at the, at the event to come over to the booth, sign up for it. If you're watching uh, globally, visit our website and sign up. All right, so you, you, also, uh, you, you, you also cover some government uh, customers. Yep. I'm curious, uh, has the CIA deal that Amazon's done had any you know, noticeable impact on your business? You know, that's really exciting. Um, I, I've had the opportunity to, to watch that develop firsthand, um, and it absolutely has had a big impact on um, customers' level of comfort with the security that AWS has native to their solution. Um, We've done work, for example, with the United Nations as one of our customers. And uh, last year after uh, WikiLeaks, there was a lot of nervousness. And I think with the signing of the CIA deal, it's really quelched a lot of those concerns and made a lot more people comfortable about um, AWS's security capabilities. Yeah, I think Amazon certainly this year is uh, really flexing their muscle, but certainly not putting the gloves on yet. They're in the ring in the enterprise, because they're we know they're all going there. We said it last year. John, that's why I like you, you're a fighter. Just like me. I love that. I mean, <laughs> take, I, off, take off the gloves. It's the East Coast thing, you know? <laughs> you're from you're in Philly, right? So yeah, like that's right. you know, you gotta be able to handle yourself in public. Um, that's why I'm good at Twitter, because like you know, I'm not afraid to, to say things and to fall on my sword. But um, Chassis is pretty competitive, I mean he's got that fire in his belly. Um, I mean, they're on a mission, and it really is the cadence of, of, of Amazon feels like what Intel was in the early days. You're seeing the, this new categorical shift and inflection point coming together, and they're not stopping, and they're really just more about the tsunami coming in. The question is, you know, how much turf do they take into the beach and the land, how much water comes in, in on the enterprise? So we always say, Who's going to put the seawall up? EMC, VMware, <laughs> IBM. At what point, what do the enterprise guys have to do? Certainly Oracle's put on notice today with the database. Yep. Now, I find it ironic that MySQL is owned by Oracle. So, <laughs> I mean, we'll see, you know, job not done until Amazon doesn't run. That's kind of old Microsoft philosophy. Will that be a weirdness there? So all this stuff is so much fun to cover. What's your take on it? I mean, how much is, is Amazon going to win right now in the enterprise? Um, in terms of real adoption, certainly my test and dev, I mean, I can't believe you brought that up in the keynote, because that's like, I mean, that's so 2008. But now you're starting to see workloads, you see in migrations. What's your analysis on that? Well, we have a rather jaded view. Uh, we are deep in the flow of AWS opportunities, and uh, the way we've positioned Cloud Nexa, uh, we're typically seeing customers who have already made that commitment to move to the AWS platform and we're solving problems for them in terms of the management of those um, solutions. Which one, which problems do you guys knock down first? What's the low hanging fruit? Well, you know, when customers have moved from traditional data centers, you know, they've got those sysadmins that are operating those boxes for them and keeping everything running. You move to a virtual environment, especially AWS, a lot of those core services are gone, yet, you know, they still need it. So, I mean, that's the, that's the gaps we fill. And when we talk to enterprise customers especially, it, 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 sometimes it can be quite painful because they want to move as rapidly as we try to move our customers, but they're still bogged down in the traditional uh, processes. You know, they have to get through the CISO and the networking and the storage groups, and you know, it it's just comes together. Now, I think it's moving a lot faster than what happened in the past, it certainly is, but you still have to jump through those hurdles, and on the enterprise side especially, um, Amazon has now stepped up, really flexed their muscles and said, hey, you know, AWS is enterprise great. Um, you know, for enterprise customers for CloudNext, it only represents about 20% of our total 
uh, market. Most of our customers are mid-market customers. Um, even in, in the government sector, we tend to focus on NGOs, uh, non-government organizations, nonprofits, and these are more uh, these firms are more conducive to rapid adoption. So I, no, I love I love the classic you know investor or presentation. Who do you target? Tell me who the buyer is. So you bring up a good point. You you mentioned mid market. Okay, that's clearly how you're consumed. Um, but a lot of the land and expand cloud based technologies are value driven, meaning you can consume it any way you want. So it's really, if, if a large enterprise wants to standardize on your stuff, they're not going to, nah, it's not like they're not the target, right? I mean, so, but they buy in a shadow IT-like way, which is, hey, I, this department, or this is my, my focus, my data center, my knock, or whatever, I have an objective, I can buy it that way, or I can go company-wide. Do you guys have that same approach? Yeah, I mean, you're seeing more business-driven solutions outside core IT, that, that's very typical, um, and, when we do have an enterprise that we're approached by the C-level suite, um, and they are, they're talking like a business, uh, like a business sponsor, then, then that's, we know that's a customer that we can really get behind and work with. Um, you know, and, and it's rare. You don't see that as much. I think it's happening more and more. Um, and I think most of the big enterprises that we've been engaged with have been direct business-led opportunities. Um, and, you know, and I think Gartner covered that yesterday as well in, the, in some of the presentations. Uh, I think Tiffany pointed out uh, maybe 45%, you know, don't hold me to that, but I think it's something like 45% of the moves were driven by business uh, within the enterprise. All right, Joel, can you take us into some, what were the security discussions you're having today? Uh, the, the kind of story on a Amazon has been, you know, it can most of the time be better security than what you have in-house when you were doing it, but their security is their security and Amazon does not really change for it. Obviously they're adding a, new, a lot of new services like the key management pieces. What are you seeing in the field? Is this a, a challenge or impediment for users or are, are, have they kind of you know, gone over the inflection point and are, are bought into public cloud security? Well, well, first off, the announcement on the key management is huge and we're going to have to read into that and really begin to understand what that means. But we can already uh, foresee that's going to have a big impact on our business alone. Um, so so is, that, is that one that your customers have been asking for? Well, we've been asking for okay, it, for sure. Um, as part of the managed services offering. Uh, so that's going to that's gonna be huge so for us. So is that a new revenue opportunity for you then? No, no absolutely no. not. It just means more efficiency okay. and uh, better service to the customers. Um, you know, an interesting, uh, I had mentioned the United Nations earlier, and we, we think about security in terms of our own frame of reference. And I had the opportunity to be in front of the uh, individuals from the World Refugee Agency and they talked about security and what it means. So it's really, depends on where you're sitting and what security actually means, but you know, uh, they said, well look, you, you, if you have a security breach, it means somebody's credit card gets swiped. If World Refugee has a, a World Refugee Organization has a security means, it means a real live person in one of our refugees camps is in peril. Uh, so, you know, we really do take security very seriously and we've been able to um, handle our customers' concerns with, with the capabilities of the AWS. So I got to ask you, so uh, you guys are certainly close to, to the disruptive force. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to call them the evil empire yet or the, uh, the, you know, the good guys or bad guys. No one knows. I, I like what they're doing. Actually, we're a customer of Amazon with our CrowdChat product. And I just love what, what the team's done. It's been fantastic to watch. I think it's going to be a, a revolution. So I got to ask you, you know, take your, uh, your CEO hat off of your company. And share with the folks, what's the coolest thing about Amazon this year at reInvent? What's the coolest thing you've seen? What's the vibe? What's it like here? People who aren't, aren't physically here can't feel the energy. They don't, may not be able to connect the dots on the massive yeah. disruption. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just grown so much and uh, there's so much acceptance and I think the general vibe now is it's, it has tipped. Um, there's no doubt about it. Um, the amount of energy here being displayed around cloud adoption and, and, and some of the discussions are, are not about like if, but hey, we're doing this, and how can we do it better? How, how can we consume more? What, what else can we open it up to in our company? Um, and and th those are the types of discussions they're having now. A couple years ago, you were just hearing the discussions about what we're thinking about. Yeah. And now the discussions are what well, we're doing and we want to do more. Yeah, and they're picking up some pre pretty big ground. Security, a lot of the services they're doing around auditing and, and compliance, really big, kind of boring details that are table stakes for, for the enterprises. Yeah, I mean, it, it, again, we're, we're focusing on mid-market, yeah, so yeah. Our, fortunately our customers Give us a little more leeway with that, yeah. but when we get into the enterprise customers, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, you're seeing that pan out. You saw Johnson & Johnson present today, and they're a great customer from Amazon, and uh, Intuit certainly on the financial services side, 
and you're going to see more and more uh, non-traditional businesses. I mean, look, the Philips announcement, uh, you know, I have a healthcare background by, uh, prior to being in IT, and wow, that is just, that's incredible to think about the possibilities um, yeah. that present itself to traditional healthcare IT companies and what they can now deliver yeah. to consumers. I thought, and I thought I the gotta keynote, say one more. I thought the, the keynote between MLB being cool play, ah. entertainment to serious life-saving was really nice perspective. Yeah. And you know, the analysis of uh, the, the double play and learning not to slide, something we've all learned since kids, <laughs> uh, but now seeing that graphically represented in real time. The data uh, doesn't lie, truth in crowds, truth yeah. in the data. Joel, great to come see you again. Great. Thanks for coming Thanks, on theCUBE. Congratulations Thanks on your too. success. I'll give you the final word. Just share with the folks, what's your business objectives this year? What are you working on? You onboarding more employees, closing more business? What's the, what's the update on, on the yeah, company? Absolutely, well, I'm happy to report for 2014, we're actually tracking close to a 1,000% for customer uh, new customer increases. That's an like amazing number, and I think that's really indicative of how cloud is growing. And we're looking to at least match that in 2015 and maybe beyond. Uh, we're also expanding some uh, of our service locations into the Austin market, uh, diversifying from our Philadelphia location. Uh, so we're looking really forward to 2015 being a, another great year for us. Well, congratulations. Certainly the disruptions here, water skiing behind the wake of Amazon's uh, new opportunities. This is the new normal, as they're saying. This is theCUBE, of course, we're extracting the signal from the noise. And we'll be right back after this short break. Live wall-to-wall -wall blanket coverage here in Las Vegas, live at Amazon reInvent. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back.